Okay, here we are in Premiere Pro. The very first thing that you're going to see is this prompt when you open it. And what we want to do is we want to start a new project. And this little window here is the new project window. This is where you give it a name. And it is the MK Let's Play of Shadow Warrior. This little window right here will basically tell the rest of your media what to do when you drag and drop it into the program. When you drag and drop something into the project, it will automatically know what you want to do setting-wise with those elements. So let's go through your rendering and playback. This is uh, the renderer. If you have a fast GPU and you want to use it, you can always click this on and it will speed things up for you. But sometimes there are compatibility issues with an accelerator. So you just got to see what it does when you do that. If it crashes a lot, then you might have to go back over to the playback, the main video card your computer contains. Time code, this is where you can, you know, this is how you want to view it. This is time, this is frames. Time codes by seconds is the easiest to understand, so you want to just leave that alone. Audio display format, audio samples. To be honest with you, I have no idea what that does. So I'm just, I just leave it alone. DV is the capture format. HDV is if you use a high definition camera that will film above um, standard definition, which is 720p, 1080p. Um, if it doesn't do t a 720 or 1080p, then you would be um, standard definition, which is DV. But these two settings merely affect the frame size you're working with and try to do a preset. It won't affect the final render. You can do whatever you want with that and make it any size you want at the end. I usually just leave it default after naming it. Easiest way, leave it alone when you name it. I click OK so that it opens the rest of the program. Okay, so now here we are in the main program, uh, Premiere Pro. And as you can see, we've got several windows and tools to use as we edit this video together. This is the import media start window. All of the media that will be in the video or needed for it will be contained in this little box right here. This is a means to find some of the media. You don't necessarily need this uh, to do so. There's several ways to import media into the program. It's pretty lenient on those type of things. So you can either import media like so navigate your it's under MKLP Shadow Warrior like this and we will try and highlight all of the media we need to import and we will open all of them and it will import them like so but right now now we have two separate pieces of media my face which is filmed on the camera above my computer and the in-game footage. Now, so what we want is you want to grab all of these in-game clips first so they appear on the timeline on the first level. Now, Premiere is pretty good about organizing things correctly when you drop things but sometimes it's not. Sometimes it will scramble them up, so you have to actually be very, very cautious about that. This right now is the timeline that I've dragged all of the clips into, and they've gone end upon end until the very last clip. And it will take a total of 51 minutes and 12 seconds, which is a really long let's play, so we'll need to file that down a lot. And what I just did there, this is the scrubber it, it goes through forward and back in time this is the start of the video this is the end by clicking one of by clicking the far square like so you will be zooming in and out increasing or decreasing time that you can see which uh, far away is good at seeing media and getting and navigating through the timeline but 
when you're actually doing some very detailed work, you would want to be zoomed in quite a bit to be able to manipulate frame by frame. So now we've got our in-game footage on the bottom layer. And if you don't know about layers, uh, it's quite like Photoshop. Mm, imagine this is a piece of paper on a desk. And uh, each piece of media that you put into this timeline uh, on one of these layers would be like uh, dropping something on top of the piece of paper. I'm trusting the program very much by selecting them all at once and dragging them like this because sometimes it does not work. Okay, so this is the first frame of me. If you look here at the timeline and you want to see in detail uh, the sound or the profile, then you can always double click and it will show it to you. It will also add thumbnails, the first frame of each of the video clips in the timeline if you so choose to see them. Before syncing anything together, I want to get the effect right. I want to get how I want my face to appear and where on the screen before I try and sync these clips together. So this being the top layer of my face, a uh, little eyeball here basically makes the layer invisible or visible. So we're going to take the clip like so that I want to manipulate. And three effects will come standard on every single piece of video media. And they are motion, opacity, and time remapping. We won't get into time remapping because it's advanced. And we might get in a little bit of opacity, but motion is what we're primarily going to do now. When you select the effect motion, it will activate this little, oh, this is what you want me to do, rim around the clip. And you can take the clip from these corner pins, like just like you're resizing a window in Windows, and you can change its size. And you can tell it to be uniform, or you can uh, manipulate it with an aspect ratio that's incorrect. But we want it to be uniform for now, and we'll get it to a place or somewhere we want it to be where it's not really in the way and I usually take the center or this side because menus tend to be on the left but this is a weird game so I'm just gonna put myself over here and see I have all this background that I don't want to be viewed I just kinda want it to be centered around scorpions emotions and face so I'm gonna take an effect called garbage mat and I want a four point garbage mat and what this is going to do is allow me to change the visible frame. And so I want to take this corner and I want to bring it to where my shoulder is. And I want to take this corner right here and bring it down to the top of my head. I'm trying to center it on where my head's going to be a majority of the time during gameplay. These numbers here are supposed to be pretty much doubled. So every time you see a number, you want to see the same number somewhere else to indicate that the points are at right angles of each other. And see how this one here does not quite match this? That means they're not exactly aligned. So what I'm going to do is select one of them, press Control C to copy, select the other one, most closely to it and control V to paste so now that little corner right there just moved to where it's supposed to be and everything matches up so that's where I want my window and how big I want it motion again so I can manipulate where I want to put this because I realize that on this side of the screen later in the game uh, my sword will be blocked because he primarily uses a sword so I'm just going to probably put it on this side of the screen because it doesn't interfere with a whole lot cover this man's head a little bit I'd like to put my head on his head but I can't this is low wing by the way back here now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little border to it um, and it's not called border as an effect in Vermeer is called edge. So anything you want to do to the edge or around the, the clip, uh, you have to type edge. 
So it'll bring all these things having to do with edging. Beveled edges thin, we're going to add and drag that. And drop it onto the clip we want it on. The bevels are too big for me, as I can see right now. So I'm going to go to the bevel edges effect here. Click on the edge thickness, and since it's 0 0.5, I know that that's too big, so I'm going to go smaller than that. I'm going to go 0 0.02. And that looks wonderful. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to change the light color. Now this is white currently. That's why it's emitting this lighter uh, rim around it. This little wheel right here, where that line indicates where the light is coming from. So I'm just going to see how it, see how it moves. We're just going to take it and we're going to put the light coming from the center of the action, probably like right here. So it's going to go up like that. We're going to change the light color to primary color of the game, probably this. That'll work pretty good. Now we get into the fun part, color grading. Remember that that control Z key, control Z, will always save you for any program, pretty much. Control Z is undo last. Control shift Z is to redo if you've gone back too far. Now we're going to do some color grading and the two tools to do that in Premiere are three-way color corrector. So I'm going to grab that, put it in, and RGB curves, which I can see down here. Want both of those on my clip. Now I'm going to go in the effects controls down to the first effect to manipulate, which is the three way color corrector to drop first. And I'm going to now manipulate the shadows. This is uh, the, the uh, hues closest to black. And so we're going to take those hues and put them to the blue edge of the spectrum. It changed everything that's really, really dark to a kind of a blue hue. I'm going to do the opposite with the mid-tones. I'm going to kind of warm them up. Kind of like a Michael Bay movie. I'm going to cool down my highlights. Bring that up a little bit more. There you go. If you manipulate these things, it will change where these wheels correspond. So we don't really need to do that. Moving on to RGB curves. Curve is basically pulling it uh, Pulling the highs to a either a higher or a lower end of the spectrum. So we want to take the highs and make them a little bit higher than they are. And take the lows and make them a little bit lower so we can pop everything out. This is each hue in the same type of spectrum. It's from darkest to light and where you want to either take out or apply color red, green, and blue. I don't usually mess with green too much. I'm not crazy about green. I'm not a Wachowski. I don't do Matrix movies. So we want to take the blues like before and kind of punch them in the shadows and place a little bit up here. The highlight range we wanted to have more red so I'm going to just touch it with red and then take it down in the shadows. This is really tweaky. It's it's once you get it right, leave it alone. <laughs> There's a little bit too much green in the back. I don't want it, so I'm gonna take it down. There we go. Now control S is to save instantly everything up to that point. And uh, it's important to do that because you never know what can happen and you can lose a lot of progress if you don't. We got our clip the way we want it to look, and what we're going to do is um, basically copy all of those effects that we just put on this clip and make sure it goes on to the rest of the clips because we want them to look the same. And we want to uh, paste all of the effects from here to all of them which I keep doing the wrong way. Patouche, there, there we go, there we are. At this point in the video, I went to show you how to sync everything back together because the top clip 
of my face and the bottom clip of the game footage were not synced properly, but all I did was take the audio from the top clip and match it to the audio of the bottom clip um, with these peaks right here. Once that was done, I deleted all of the audio from the top face cam which was uh, containing noise from the fan of the tower it's sitting on. So I didn't want that audio track in any of these, in any of the final product. So I got rid of them all. So now we're gonna go back to where we were. I've been scrubbing through, looking for dead air. We go like this. Ah. Saving it's right here is where the actual uh, fraps crashed. So there's a whole bunch of footage missing from this bit. So we're just going to pretend that never happened. And we're going to get further on. And I'll show you the cut tricks ah, that I was using. We're running all the time. Okay. So getting to a. Uh, Point to where I want to show you how to cut the way I cut. So let's see. There's a few ways you can cut footage or select a point to where you want them to separate. Now you can press Control K when something is selected to cut that particular media, or use the tool right here called Razor, and you see the hotkey right there is C. So typically I press C, not pressing Shift. If you don't press Shift, you can click any everywhere you click will cut but if you press shift and hold it down and click it will cut everything on that blue line right there we've cut there so I want to get to a point to where um, something happens again so we're probably gonna get rid of this um, door portion where I try to get through the door and I can't <laughs> Okay, so I need a silver key, and I said that right there. And I'm going to trim all of this out. Now, V, think of it like the pointer itself, like an, up, uh, like an upside down arrow. V will be your selection tool or your timeline manipulator. You always want to default back to that. So you press V, you get that back. And I selected all of these clips in the middle at once by clicking and dragging and press delete to get rid of them because I don't want them. And now I'm going to take the space in between any space in between two clips and there's no gap to be filled and delete the space. So everything matches up just nice and neat like that. Pretty cool. Okay, so I just got to uh, cutting a pretty big section out of this. I'll show you what I do. If I select the track or any clip on it and want to return to the cutting point, I would press and hold shift and press home and you'll begin you'll be to the last point where you cut. So you won't have to do a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of navigating through the zoom slider. Now if you my hand is positioned for maximum hotkeys that I use, so I got my shift key where the pinky is the like shift control is where the pinky is my middle finger is on C my index finger is on V and my thumb is on the space bar lost don't know where to go so we're gonna cut back to the gold key where I'm inevitably going to die uh, C holding shift cutting all the tracks at once pressing V Selecting all of the tracks at once, deleting all of the tracks, and deleting the space between them. I could highlight this, press shift and home to get back to that, and see how they slice. I need the key. Ah, this way. Pretty good. Gold key. Okay, so now I'm at a point to where I say a line of dialogue that's. Where did I get the Uzi from before? I don't remember. I don't want to put something there. To indicate how how dumb it was that I didn't find this thing again, 
So what I'm going to do is create a title. Um, creating a title is just when you add text in Premiere. And how you have to do that is you have to generate the element in here. So we're going to new item and go to title. We're going to name it Uzi. A little window pops up. It's kind of like its own little photo shop generator and it will put the video clip on the background so you know exactly where you're putting the text in the foreground this little mouse tool is where I want the text to go and so I'd probably like the text to be somewhere off the side of my face so I'm going to put it here I want to read something like it's in the gray truck. So what we need to do is change the size because it's too big. It goes off the frame. And so uh, if we change the size over here, its size, we can scrub through and it will change the size. If you just wanted to select a particular word or letter and it Increase or decrease that size, you could always do that as well by selecting and then also resizing. There's presets down below here, as you can see, uh, for text styles. You don't have to be married to any particular one of these, but if you wanted to get off on the right foot or on the right track to what you're looking for, you could just click them and then edit each individual thing about them from this bar over here. You can just click one of these things and the text will turn into that. And at that point, you can decide what the style of font is, which it currently is hobo. But we might want to use impact, something like that. This is the actual color that's applied to the text itself. Uh, and where when you manipulate one of these squares, it will change how it blends to the other squares. So if I were to put red in it, um, like so, it would change. Now, what it's trying to do there is render. If you select nothing and you press the Enter key, it will try to pre-render your entire project. Right, perfect. Leave that alone. Once we exit out, it will make it. It will create the actual title itself. Once I press exit, it will generate the Uzi. Um, if you ever want to go back and fix that and change it to something else, you have to go back in here to edit it. You cannot edit it in the timeline. You have to go back into the actual project media and double click it to open it back up to edit it. So now we're going to drag and drop this over the point in time we want it in this timeline where I say those words, which when I accidentally press enter to render, it took me to the beginning of the clips. So I just got to find this real fast. Where did I get the Uzi from before? Okay, so right there is where I want to put it. Where did I get the Uzi from before? Now I'm going to clicking and dragging, and now it's going to appear as that little purple clip on the layer above every other layer because I want it to appear on top just like that so right now I'm to the point to where I say oh my god no. oh my god about the firefight in the first room where I indicate how little health I have left so we're gonna go to my icons folder like so we're gonna find an arrow here this is a pretty arrow. We use this arrow here. We're going to put the arrow up here in the source, which will also put it in here because it's part of the project. So we're going to take the white background arrow and we're going to put it here. We're going to position it motion wise over the number two down here. And we're going to in motion go to rotate rotation right here 
and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees like that scale and we're going to scale it down to an acceptable scale probably about the width of the box itself we'll do a little uh, do a little bit of a fade in and back out so we're going to indicate no end press shift D to put a fade in and out decrease the length of time that the arrow is on the screen Unless the length of time it takes to come on and go off so it'll just go like this that's pretty good okay so now what we're gonna do is get rid of that white around the arrow let's try uh, an ultra key how about that ultra key take it put it on the top and see how the controls work the key in color is going to be white. Now that will work. Now the setting will be aggressive. And we will increase the tolerance. Get rid of all that white. The pedestal, we'll move it. Change it around. Shadow. Highlight. Transparency. It's looking more like I want it right now. The mat, I'm going to choke it a lot. And that is what is left of the image. And I want to bring the edges in to get rid of those white pixels on the outside. Choke. I should take the choke to 75. Now I'm going to zoom in see what these little white pixels are doing now as you can see when I'm doing this in real time if I'm holding something down or manipulating something it tries to give you the maximum quality of what the render will look like but if I let it go it will go back to my preset viewing of quality which is now half my playback resolution is half the quality so it fills in these little gaps with um, noise. That's the reason why you can see it's filled in, but it will work just fine. Okay, keep it like that. Pretty good. Fit it. Now we've got this bloody arrow that's over our health bar. And play through, and it'll be like this. Oh, oh my god! And here we go with the ending. Yes! Oh, I finally. did it! <laughs> oh my god! Oh, I hate this Also, game keep in mind, so editing, editing is a lot of time. Mostly because of little video issues with uh, the current tutorial one. But uh, it's my first one, so I, I'm sorry. Just bear with me. So now. What we're coming I to is the outro screen. All that I've done. Okay, so I'm going to end it right there. It's pretty good. Right there. It's long enough. I don't need to keep going and going and going. So, uh, yeah, V, get rid of this. So this is where the outro is going to go. So the outro, I have a PNG image for. So I'm going to find the image. And drag and drop it into the project. That's what it looks like. I'm going to drag and drop the MP Let's Play. That's at the end of the timeline. Like that. So it just cross right on over. And now I have to add the actual videos that go in these blanks. So what I'm going to do now is Recalling history. So let's do Far Cry, Blood Dragon. And we will find the actual video, put it up here so we can edit it.
really fast, we'll find a portion of the video where there's something going on that's bright and flashy. We'll just maybe just take the title itself. Well, uh, this bracket here is mark in, so this is where I want to start. Uh, what I want to keep. Here it says, and that's where I'm going to end the what I want to keep portion. I'm going to drop it right here. I'm going to sync it properly. I've got to change this timeline to the actual one right there so they ramp properly. So we've got the Far Cry. We're going to go to Motion. And this is where we're going to resize it to where it will fit into one of these little blanks. When I made this, I didn't format it properly for this aspect ratio, so I can't uniformly scale this to the ratio that the monitor actually is or was shot on. So I have to just fit it to get really intricate. We would uh, take it up to 50 and look at where these edges line up. There we go. That's a good little frame right there. And I'm going to use that as the template size for every other one of these that I'm going to drop in. Okay, so we drop that one in and paste the attributes from the previous one here to it and then just drag it over. So what we're going to do now is we obviously need more tracks to add these last two clips in. So we're going to add tracks to no audio tracks needed. And OK. So we'll add two more tracks on top. And that's where I'm going to put the next clips. See, we're just dropping in the MK Thanksgiving now. And we're going to paste the attributes. We're going to do it like this. I'll show you. Select the borderlands. The last one we just put. Copy. Now visible. The layer we want to interact with. Paste the attributes onto it. The motion exclusively. And there it goes. Right where the borderlands was. And now all we have to do is select motion and guide it to one of the other windows. And there's the last one. Now it will play all yeah. of those video clips on top of each other. And we'll just quickly figure out what we want to do here. Something like this. Okay, I'm gonna use that. It's me. It's badass, but it is. Okay, so this is where the bass kicks. 19 seconds in. I'm gonna do a close bracket because I wanna keep all before it anyway. So, dragging from the audio only, a little wave, will only take audio. If you grab from here, you'll only drag video. If you drag from the entire thing that's in here, you'll bring them both. Let's put it to where the end is going to be. Let's size the music accordingly so it doesn't take over. So once the bass hits, that's where I want these pictures to start. So I'm just lining up the transition with the bass kick. That's all I'm doing. This right here, I'm going to actually fade in and out. So I'm going to add the fade by pressing Shift D while the entire clip is highlighted. Dude, beat the first level of this Shadow Warrior game. If you'd like to see more, uh, you have to really make it up to me because this is hard as shit. There we go. Now we've got this little subscribe to Scorpions Gaming Channel logo. 
just put right here. You drop the little shadow on it. And it looks pretty ready to go. I'm just going to just drop a, uh, drop a shadow on the subtext as well, like so. And then leave it alone. Just feather it out some. Soften that shadow. There, it pops a little bit more. Now comes for the fun part. The exportation. There's a couple different ways you can do it. When you're finished with the video and you're ready to go, go to File, go to Export, Media, and it will bring up this little Export Settings box. Now you can either queue it, and it will bring up a, the Media Encoder, which is Adobe's default media rendering program. Or you can export straight from this window. If you don't have Media Encoder, but you do have Premiere, you might have to actually resort to exporting like this. What we're going to do is we're going to go for a format. Go to Format. H.264 is code for MP4, but this is the it's a very good compression. I have a default template for Let's Plays right now that I've made, and that is because YouTube will work in 30 frames per second, so I will render it in 30 frames per second. And progressive field, square pixels, standard NTSC. This is dependent on your region of the world. Your profile's high, I would like a good bit count. So what I'm going to do is the, the camera I was recording with will record with 17 megabytes per second. So I'm just going to set that to 18 because odd numbers for some reason are annoying to it. And I'm going to set the maximum bit rate to 8 megabytes higher than that. 26. It is saying that I'm trying to render the sequence from this little tiny point right here, but I'm not. I would like to render the entire thing. So we're going to open this up to expand the entire duration. Start this needle from the beginning. And I'm going to export like this. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed our first ever tutorial of BF Tutorials, and if you have any feedback or any questions on something you'd like to learn later that we might film, just let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching.